Hello, and welcome to Revolutionize Your Relationship. I am your host, Eva Blake. And in this series, I'm talking to a variety of experts who are uniquely qualified to educate and empower you to master your mind and body intimacy, to unleash your passion and to create everything that you desire in life and love, because you are absolutely worth it. And I'm thrilled to introduce you today to Ray Doctor, who is also a doctor of psychology. <laughs> He works as a modern day relationship and rapid breakthrough coach. And for the last 25 years, he has successfully helped over 6,000 clients break through limited beliefs and challenges to have better relationships, improve family life, and more success. He is a pioneer in the field of bridging psychology and Eastern philosophies to technology, science, and spirituality. And he believes this is my favorite part, that in this world of modern relationships, we are co-creating something new and bigger than just us. We're expanding beyond what our ancestors created and making things better for our planet. Welcome, Ray. I really like that line because it truly is. That's people, I was on an interview yesterday and they asked me about what is your idea of a modern relationship? And I said, well, think about what's going on now, such as say the pandemic. I mean, that brought a lot of stuff to the surface. And so they said, like, they were talking about um, kind of what direction you think it's going. I said, I don't know. We're co-creating that right now. I have no idea. But that's kind of like the modern relationship, because the paradigm of the past was for survival. It was to have children. It was to have children working on a farm uh, to a lot of these kind of outdated, um, say, needs. We now are trying to become so much more. So I really appreciate that you like that last line, because that's what it's really about. What I really appreciate about it, and I'm going to ask you to go deeper into, you know, uh, this this distinction around what is a modern relationship and what are some of the nuances of it. But what I really love that you bring is that the way that we relate to each other now is is actually going to affect more than just us in our home, more than just you and me in the bedroom together or at the dining room table, that it actually has the capacity to shape the entire planet, transform the world. And so how we relate to ourselves and to each other can create a really big ripple effect. So I would love if you could go deeper into, you know, what are you noticing in terms of the way that modern people want to relate to each other? And, you know, where we kind of like, <laughs> maybe we rub up and we create some friction and what the possibilities are there. So, yes, thank you. Um, so first off for uh, like millennials and Gen Z's, they feel maybe lost to also they're created through looking at their apps, hooking up to not seeing the value of say buying a house together because also they can't afford it to that. They see what's kind of going on a planet. It doesn't make sense. They see the unhappiness with the, the Gen X and the baby boomers. And they're like, I don't want to do that as yeah. well. Then you have Gen X's and baby boomers saying grow some balls or, you know, it was so much better in the 70s or 60s or whatever <laughs> else. And they're maybe still perpetuating these kind of old narratives that are kind of black or white. That's kind of like, you know, very judgmental narratives. So a big difference would be where hopefully people become more open that are a little bit older to understand that we are to evolve from where we were because if people were to really step into how they really felt in the relationship, even that whole, they never argued, they were married for 50, yeah. 50 years. Well, I can also say, well, maybe there was something wrong in a relationship because we're there to bring out each other's shadows and light. And so I had never, for example, I remember working with a few times I work with people and they would say, and they have like this passive aggressive energy or depression. And they would say, my parents were so loving towards me. And I, I've asked like, and they would say, they never argued. I said, um, but did you feel something? Did you see something to, you know, did you see your mom, maybe not argue, but shut down and walk away because that, you know, unconsciously and consciously is shaping li literally neural nets to perceptions of relationships. So how we show up every moment is forming those connections. Now, I have a seven-year-old son who is constantly watching me. And for the most part, like I don't get lost in where I once were, but sometimes things comes, come out of my mouth and he'll say, why is that? And I will say, you're right, why is that? Mm -hmm. So he's like my master because it doesn't make sense to him. An example would be this, his mom, who's younger than me, she didn't want him to put his feet in a pool and they got into like an argument or something. And uh, 
he got some like time out and we're not, we know we, I, I'm the primary parent, but you know, we co-parent. And he said, it was funny how he said, she tried to put me on a timeout and yet I visit her. So it's my time with her. It just didn't make sense. He said, you're right. Like, where'd you go in that timeout? He says, I don't know, but like, it didn't make sense to me. And I went, you're so smart. And I said, she was bothered about you putting your feet in the water. And he said, yes. And then she even said, uh, and I'm not judging his mom, like, because I told you so. Well, yeah. I have taught my son to question things that don't make sense for him. So he wasn't being rude, but she was coming from his perspective, how she was taught, say, from her mother that, like, you don't know, question an adult or whatever. And maybe she didn't want him to get wet, whatever. He just wanted to put his feet in the pool. I don't know. But that's an example. Yeah, yeah. We have these things where you have to do this because I told you, or that's the way we've always done it. It's not working anymore. So, yeah. um, People will see like, say millennials and they'll say like, pick a side. No, there's something in the middle. There's something we're co-creating that could be better. So that's a direction. That's kind of like my perspective on like modern relationships. It's just kind of an unfolding process right now that we're in this very moment. You know, my understanding of authenticity is that we, what, what's happening on the inside is actually what we allow someone to see on the outside. And I'd love if you can share about why that's so important and valuable in relationships, especially in this place where we are co-creating and we're not just replicating something we've seen from the past. So for those who saw the Tom Hanks movie or, or uh, portraying Mr. Rogers, and there's a scene very on in the movie where he's trying to put up a tent and he can't, it's just too cumbersome or whatever. And when he takes a break, he walks by and he sees the playback his the crew there says we'll just have it set up for you and he said why i think that's a good take and they couldn't understand like why and he said well children also need to see adults don't always have it figured out and they need help too he was such a maverick you know in the 60s it was amazing so that's kind of an example and that even happened recently uh, a couple of weeks ago where my son gave me a my so I'm also a musician. And so that used to be my path uh, about a couple of decades ago. Uh -huh. And he gave me back my album and I, he was a little bit off that morning and I kind of got my feelings hurt. I had, I, I was surprised because typically I don't take things personally, but I was not aligned. He wasn't aligned. Who, who knows? And so for me to kind of turn it into learning, I took something from my drawer that's of his. And I said, and I gave it back to him. He looked at me kind of strange and it didn't make sense to him. It was as if I was trying to give him the experience to what it felt like for me, like when two people break up, they give things back. Mm -hmm. And then I just took a deep breath in and I said, do you want to go for a walk? We went for a walk and I said, Max, why is it that you gave me back the CD? He said, I just didn't want to lose you. I, I was afraid I was going to lose it. Mm -hmm. And I just got, I went, oh my God, Max, I'm so sorry. I said, I acted like a child. <laughs> I said, I am so sorry. And we both started to laugh. So the thing is, in that experience there, I was being authentic. He sees me show up most of the time, but he also sees I'm still working through. I'm, I'm not trying yeah. to be this parent. I'm a human being. I'm something beyond my parenting role. I'm a multidimensional being. We all are. So I, I, I don't want him to idolize me. I don't want him to feel as though he has to fill my shoes all these things. It's, it's, he learns by how I also work through, say, my own mistakes. That's being authentic. That's being as raw as you can be. And, and part of how I'm able to be this way is that while my dad came from a much older generation, my dad um, was born in 1925. He passed away last year. Uh, while he had like kind of old school programming, he was very raw. I saw him cry many times. I mm. saw him get pissed off many times. I saw him smile most of the time. I saw a whole plethora of emotions to, uh, I remember him punishing me with, you know, hit me. And I remember him coming into the room and crying and saying, I, I, you know, I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to mm. I'm feeling bad about it. But, you know, some people can like, look at that as a negative thing, like even abuse, like, well, here he's like, he's, you know, hitting you, then apologizing. It sounds like a toxic relationship. Yeah, that could be a narrative. But what I saw was that he was frustrated. He was trying to work it out himself. 
and that it wasn't like something he really preferred to do. He would, it would take only five minutes and you come back in and sit with me. A beautiful man, an absolute beautiful man. So that's the level he was at. I'm, a, he was 45 years, 44 years older than me. And here I am passing on also different narratives that I don't want, but also new narratives that we're both creating together to create this new earth. Part of what I'm hearing you say in all of this is around perspective. Are you willing to be curious about your perspective? Are you willing to shift your perspective when you're in relationship? Uh, one of the things that uh, you know you you say is that you are a breakthrough coach. I understand what that means, but for people who are maybe not in, in this work, right? What does it mean to create a breakthrough in their life or for themselves with their beliefs or where they've been emotionally in order to create the relationship that they want, in order to be authentic and in intimacy with somebody else? There could also be like I can classify or coin what had had happened with my son as a breakthrough so for example a, a new person a person just getting into this who has this reflection could see that wow this is something that was passed on by my generation mm -hmm. this is what we can call like generational trauma or programming and so forth and then have that self-awareness that's a breakthrough mm -hmm. however within the context of me working as a coach that could be where a person has a life philosophy, has trust issues, has issues with um, anger, and they're judging it, and they're not able to move forward. And the way it's shown up in third dimensional reality is where they're not able to make money. They seem to have issues with relationships, other people, to that you know their health is starting to decline. And in the breakthroughs, they might realize that the way that they perceive others is a way that they perceive themselves. Yeah. The way that they continue to attract people who betray them has some correlation to their own inner trust within themselves. To when they start breaking that down and uh, little pieces, they realize that, oh, this is a reflection of myself. To there's, a, there's options of how I can think about this, how I can feel about this, to even being humbled by the experience of hearing another person's perspective and going, wow, and grown from that, such as my son saying, oh, I didn't want to lose your CD. So, but if I were in a perspective, I'm the adult, I'm the, the parent, and that, you know, he's supposed to learn from me, I maybe would never ask him that question. Yeah. So the more and more you break these narratives down, the more you have awareness and see can see things from different perspectives. When people give me like the reasons for something or just in general people mm -hmm. talk i can hear what they're saying for maybe a minimum three parallel realities meaning different experiences to even i can understand how that person within that culture or with these within stress nervous system could perceive this experience this way maybe just in this moment or just this is just their filter for this moment so i can tap into it but if i'm a little tired um, like that morning with my son to whatever else is going on in my life. Because when my two, both of my parents passed away the last couple of years, mm -hmm. during those moments of the transition, when my dad was like, you know, I was on the edge. I didn't realize that because I was waiting. We were, he was basically, he was in like comfort hospice care at our, mm -hmm. his own, own home. But there was this kind of three month process. Like, when is it going to happen? Not like I'm yeah. waiting for him to die, but it was like, Pardon me, had divided attention a lot. So from January to March, I was a little more stressed. And so the way I maybe perceived things was coming from a limited perspective because in my own body, I wasn't really connected to the true me. I was disconnected from source. I was worried about my father to other things. From your perspective with the people that you've worked with who are in relationship uh, with someone else, with their beloved, maybe they're married or they've been in a relationship for a little while, like what are some of the common um, pitfalls or rubs that you're seeing? Maybe it's around perspective or authenticity or, um, you know, anxiety to get real, right? Because I think a lot of us perceive uh, getting real, being vulnerable as a really scary thing to do. So I'd love to get into that space. So I'll take you and others on a little journey uh, <laughs> so they can understand themselves also. So the first level of problems, typically the communication is, I sacrifice all this for you. You <laughs> just do that. You know, it can look like really, you know, bad 
reality TV. And so there's no healing, there's no ownership in that. And then maybe they get to the point where they realize that there's the issue. And that issue I'm talking about is a typical. So think of it like when we're really in blame, you know, I'm going to take a different tiers. It's just like you, 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 yeah. you. Um, then the next level is what is maybe the problem. And it's the same thing. Finances to uh, lack bad, poor communication to the idea of they're not getting their needs met to all the same things people have been talking about 20, 30, 40 years ago. Then you go a little bit deeper. It goes right to what you just mentioned. Was I authentic and really express myself? Yeah. Uh, did Is this passive aggressiveness that's coming out of me is because I wasn't okay with this? To did I project this idea it was supposed to be a certain way and because it didn't end up this way that I'm upset with you rather than taking ownership, I didn't come from integrity. Mm -hmm. So even in, in this now moment, um, my nanny's in the back working and something evolved in our relationship, which was really beautiful. We can speak authentically. And that is where she found out she needed to make more money because her she spoke to her financial advisor. And there was a moment where we had to go get real because here I'm the parent trying to you know, make all these ends meet. I'm a solo parent and where she also had to show up. And we also, we got that space of where those emotions showed up. So even my own home, it's not like she's an employee because I felt her emotions. She felt my emotions and we can get real with it. So it is a requirement for every, everybody who's going to be in my life, my staff, that we can speak on that level. Otherwise you can see the face. Okay, I got it, I got it. I don't want to work or be to that passive aggressive uh, energy to where finally they just quit without telling me what happened. I want to be able to participate in my relationships. So when couples say finally show up, almost hands down 90% of the time it's because they don't communicate from that space. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's turned into all these hidden resentments, these hidden transgressions to where like when they show up, it's like, I didn't know you felt that way. Well, you did this. It's like, did you both stop talking when you yeah. got on the relationship? Like you just yeah, went, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. we're fine. <laughs> we're on a ship and everything's fine. We want to avoid conflict. When the whole point of being in a relationship is to continue to relate. Beautiful. I love that. The whole point of the relationship is to continue to relate. So, mm -hmm. so what do you do then? You know, when you're, you're with that couple and uh, you realize, or they realize for themselves, like, okay, we haven't actually been talking in a year, two years, 10 years, right. Or now we've uncovered the hidden resentments. Mm -hmm. Where do we go after that? Well, it depends on what they're bringing to the table, but what happens often if it's been going on for a really long time, they're also no longer having sex to they're no longer interested in each other. They don't have that attraction because they're not attracted to themselves and who they become in a relationship, who they became in a relationship. Yeah. And so um, it's not about fixing something. It's not about repairing the, the sinking Titanic. It is about jumping off in two separate boats to come. Like I don't work with, I, if I work with a couple, I first see them together, then separately to mm -hmm. work on those, like say, hidden res resentments and so forth. But it is very important for them to get back to who they are now, what is their why not a relationship to how they can better themselves and how that would connect to their partner now. So sometimes people will come to me saying, I want to get a divorce. I'm ready to leave. And then we find out that they don't even know what they want. They don't know, yeah. they don't even know themselves. And I will say, you know what? I'm not about trying to fix your marriage or helping you like say, get divorced. I'm here to help you show up to the best version of yourself, to be authentic with yourself and where you are now. And then from that space, in a way you, you court and co-create with your partner. And in that, just like if you're dating him or her again, either they are accepted or they reject it. From there, you figure out what you want to do. But regardless, you're going to come from a place of clarity. If you have the co-parent, then you're going to come from a place of clarity. And if you end a relationship, it's not where it's a bunch of blame and you feel like a victim, but more like this is who I am now. So regardless of what path you take, you're going to turn out being better, happier people mm -hmm. together or apart. 
I love what you said actually about if you work with a couple, you actually work with them individually because there's so there can be so much stuff in the space of the relationship that I think you know, when I've worked with couples that couples want to, they, we want to do it together. I want to know that they're in with me and we're in it together. And it's, it, it, it can be so valuable to actually take separate space to do exactly what you said, be really crystal clear inside of your own self so that you're ready to come to something with another person. You're bringing your full self to the table. Yeah. The way that can look also is that whatever you didn't work out, say in your childhood, whatever hidden shadows you're carrying in your body when you're in that space where you want to get out actually Mm -hmm. that is the source material that any coach or therapist can work with yeah to help you meaning the the whole probably purpose that you may have come together is to heal this but we have a narrative we have uh the way that we share information and movies and social media is that you know if you there's if there's conflict or you're feeling anger or sadness there must be something wrong yeah. rather than that what if that this was a divine appointment that uh, you come together was to expand to be so much more including to create the to heal the negative narrative on earth narratives mm-hmm. actually so that and no matter what when I work with people individually what they complain about with that other person, they mm-hmm. always see themselves, including maybe one of their parents or something they experienced. Yeah. Always. It's not yeah. like once in a while, it's always. If we, if we are in conflict, doesn't mean that there's quote unquote, something wrong. It actually is the gateway to something deeper. And if we're willing to go for it and get in there, we discover that we're just like our parent, or we discover, um, some new possibility that is in front of us, the vital importance of being intimate with yourself, being willing to go deep with yourself in order to reveal who you are. And that's really how we create that authentic intimacy, uh, and we're able to bring our passion to our relationships, but to our life, our, to our whole life, right? As you were saying, you know, the relationships that you're in with your child or your nanny or your friends, or even your co-parent, right? That you get to be authentic in all of those places. Thank you. Some people could perceive this as this sounds like a lot of work. That's a belief. (laughs) Yeah. Some people might think that, oh, you're just always, you have to, you pull out your journal. Oh, this is how I feel today to like, just, you have to see a coach or therapist forever. It's not like that at all. That Mm -hmm. too, that belief systems come from that old outdated negative narrative, wherever there's resistance, wherever there's a negative belief that you are there, that's where you are. Because at that same moment, you can shift your Mm -hmm. perceptions Mm -hmm. and perspectives on something and no longer feel that say stress in your body. And a simple example would be this. So I will admit to something that is still difficult for me. And it's interesting to hear this, given that I'm a coach and I've been doing this for 27 years and have heard a lot of stories, but working as a coach is different. Meaning, so I'm getting paid to, there's this container where there's this different filter where it's easier for me to say process with this person and not take this on. And I work with trauma. I work with sexual abuse. So it's not like I'm working with like super easy things. But when it comes to, as an example, um, my son always say one something to him chattering a lot uh, to just reminding him to do stuff, you know, and it's, it's normal. He's seven years old. I find my body feel intention mm-hmm. and he's doing nothing wrong. There's some, there's something in me that's filtering this in a negative way to where it could be where it's imbalanced, meaning that it's a lot of giving, but it's not his fault that this is shown up. So a lot of parents will say, you know what I do for you? This is so much hard. I work for you when it's more that I need to do more self-care. I need more help from a nanny to there's other things that I need to co-create within my existence right now, whether I have money or not, to make this a better situation. So I can yeah. receive him a different way because when I do pick him up from his mom's as an example, I'm emptied. So he'll start talking or whatever it is and it's easier for me. So it's not, it's not like there's even a problem with him. It's with my nervous system, yeah. my overstimulated nervous system playing many different roles. 
So it comes back to why am I not resting more? Why is it that I'm perceiving this as stressful? And do I have a lot of relationships that are opened up to where it's taking too much of my energy? Do I need to strengthen more of my boundaries? I mean, I can keep going on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do to feel better so I can show up more presently with my son or, you know, a lover. It's all about awareness, right? There, that, that, that list of a thousand questions that you could have just made right now is really about awareness of self. Like, how am I being in this moment? How am I showing up right here, right now in this moment? Because that changes everything. <laughs> well, is that, so yesterday I had an interview and I, they were going to go to the park, the nanny and my son. And I heard the chatter and I thought they were going to come to the room. I felt my body tense up yeah. because I'm trying to stay focused, trying to be perfect, battle narrative to, I heard him outside and she's taking a while. And like, part of me, while I'm trying to be present with the per- two people interviewing me, I'm feeling some of my body. They didn't know, but I was like, just breathing. I'm like, this is an exercise because he, this is love outside. So many parents or say people don't have children or trying would love to have that noise. They would love to have children playing in the background. So I'm aware of that as well. I'm like, okay, there's something. And then it's, it, I realized it was that narrative. I'm like, I can mess up to, he can kind of barge in here to, oh, I have an old narrative where I need to be professional and more on without that. So it was interesting. The way that I closed the interview was that he was there and it was actually an interview that had to do with like parenting. I actually brought my son in. Yeah. Beautiful. Let, let them see my son as a moment. You know what? Since it's about parenting, I'm just going to bring him in for a moment. And for me, it just felt easier in that moment. I was happier to just to kind of hold them and just embrace the experience. And I love what you're saying also about how you recognize when your body, when your body, when your body tenses up, when you have a certain sensation, then it actually, uh, starts to shape your different, your mind is a different experience or your mind starts to shape your body's experience. Right. And then you get, you get wholly invested in, as you kept saying the old narrative, right? So what a, beautiful exercise of being like, Oh, I recognize that I'm in that thing again, that I keep doing and then shifting out of it. Right. So, cause as you were saying earlier, like it doesn't have to take a lot of work it really is just about being aware and then making a choice to make a shift. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. That's the shadow work. And it's, yeah. so some people think it's like really heavy stuff. It's not, but imagine if that continue to happen and I don't reflect, I just stress right. myself to I'm still not getting a massage once a month for self-care or taking a walk on the beach yeah. to it just building up. And I become more my stress. I become my nervous system rather than being truly who I am, which is hopefully present and in my heart. Yeah. So it's little yeah. subtle things. And just with some simple tools, simple guidance, there's ways to process what's going on. It doesn't have to be like really deep, shadow work with a coach where you're like crying and oh my god this happened to me because <laughs> after facilitating over twenty two thousand sessions literally to doing this work really in a very hard way and going really deep by the way that was old programming also from my mentor he used to do two hour sessions he worked with um, fritz pearls and um carl rogers and he was one of those uh, renegades from the 60s who was like trying to change psychoanalysis and where it was deep regression work where people would cry he had this idea that it has to be it's like major cathartic experience and no 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 my sessions went from two hours to 75 minutes to you know an hour and a half to just getting where now i could be on calls and i can help a person break through something in five minutes literally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that it's going to stick But I do know that it's changed their perception about Mm -hmm. themselves forever. Mm -hmm. Whether they slip back into behavior, the the new person they've become is going to see that differently and differently to a point where they just stop that behavior. And that's really all about practice. It's like consistency and practice of awareness. Well, Dr. Ray, doctor, thank you so much for being here uh, on Revolutionize Your Relationship. I appreciate your wisdom. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone else. Come back tomorrow because there's some good juicy bits happening for you.